Welcome to Declassifying the Paranormal. Here we reveal the secrets that sinister organizations attempt to conceal from the world, objects and entities that could shake the very foundations of what we think is, and is not, possible. Today we have secured documents belonging to the SCP Foundation, and will reveal to you the nature of SCP-2952. Item Number, SCP-2952 Object Class, Euclid Safe Special Containment Procedures Urban and Suburban Sections of SCP-2952 should be camouflaged appropriately according to their surrounding environment, or built directly into the walls or foundation of nearby buildings. Underwater sections of SCP-2952 are to be disguised as Internet cables. Sections of SCP-2952 in rural or undeveloped areas are to be buried underground. As of January 5, 2017, instances of SCP-2952-1 are to be exposed to allow travelers using SCP-2952 to depart and board. SCP-2952-1 instances are to be remotely monitored so that civilians who encounter SCP-2952 can be detained and amnesticized. If an SCP-2952-1 instance is still in the process of being uncovered and set up for monitoring, a small meal of fruits, milk, nuts, wildflowers, and honey is to be left at the instance at each sunrise and sunset. The plate is to be accompanied by a note in Welsh politely apologizing for the inconvenience and providing a date for when the instance will be open for transit. Though SCP-2952 does not require food or water, regular interaction and play with the head end of SCP-2952 is advisable to maintain emotional health and is beneficial to on-site morale. Description, SCP-2952 is a male Pembroke Welsh Corgi measuring over 30,000 km in length. The head and front legs of SCP-2952 are located in Portland, Oregon, while the hindquarters are located in a rural area of Japan's Kariwa district, weaving through the Americas, Europe, and much of Asia in between. SCP-2952 does not appear to age, nor does it require food or water. SCP-2952 will not move more than 5 meters from its original position, even if threatened or offered a reward. SCP-2952 will quickly regenerate from all damage done to it. One end will respond to stimuli from the other without the delay that would be expected due to its length. At certain areas along SCP-2952's length, small openings will form along its sides at regularly scheduled intervals. See Schedule SCP-2952-1 for a full timetable. These locations are designated instances of SCP-2952-1. There are 324 known instances of SCP-2952-1. Some are located in major cities, others in suburban or rural areas. The formation of these holes does not seem to harm or adversely affect SCP-2952. When these openings appear, Humanoid beings will exit SCP-2952. These entities, designated SCP-2952-2, are on average 3 cm high and cannot be viewed directly, they must be photographed or filmed, though physical evidence of their presence such as shadows or footprints can be observed. After the first group exits, a different group of SCP-2952-2 will appear and enter into the same opening. The opening will then seal until the next scheduled event. The same instance of SCP-2952-2 can be seen entering at one SCP-2952-1 location and departing at another. Openings on the dexterous side of SCP-2952 take passengers west, while those on the sinistrous side take passengers east. The average documented speed of SCP-2952 appears to be 120 km per hour, not accounting for stops at SCP-2952-1 instances. The burying of many of the SCP-2952-1 instances stopped SCP-2952-2 from entering or exiting SCP-2952. Three days after all SCP-2952-1 instances were buried, Project Director Stevens disappeared from his apartment, with an adult European mole left in his place. Over the next three weeks, 17 of the construction workers responsible for burying SCP-2952-1 instances woke to find the walls of their houses had been replaced by a mixture of poison ivy and death cap mushrooms. After two months, researcher Mills, who had been in charge of testing the regenerative properties of SCP-2952, woke up with poisonous nightshade berries in his mouth, 
and stakes of hawthorn driven through his hands and feet. The anomalous events were theorized to be the work of the SCP-2952-2 population. In response, a plan to appease SCP-2952-2 was devised using information collated from relevant myths, leading to the current protocol for unburying and monitoring instances of SCP-2952-1, implemented December 9, 2016. Two weeks later, the mole disappeared from its containment area and was replaced with Director Stevens, and the poison ivy and mushrooms disappeared from the homes of the construction workers. Researcher Mills' wounds were not healed, it is theorized that this was retaliation by instances of SCP-2952-2 for injuring SCP-2952 in the course of studying its abilities. Security footage showed that during the retrieval and detaining of civilians who saw SCP-2952, there were instances of SCP-2952-2 following the Foundation agents and observing their actions closely. On January 5, 2017, SCP-2952 became visually imperceptible to all humans not under the Foundation's employ, in an identical manner to that of SCP-2952-2. In addition, instances of SCP-2952-2 are now visible to Foundation employees, though not to civilians. As such, SCP-2952 has now been reclassified as safe. Addendum On January 9, 2017, Director Stevens had a note left on his desk by a starling, which flew out a window before it could be caught. The text of the note, translated from Welsh, is as follows. Thank you for your prompt response to commuter complaints and wonderful customer service. As such, we have granted all members of your organization complimentary transportation on our CORGI system. Please send a sparrow to the council of the SHE office nearest you if you have further questions. G. Fox Glove, Director of Transportation. The Council of the Talwith Tag. Agent Davis Ride on SCP-2952 can be found under Exploration Log SCP-2952 Alpha. Exploration Log SCP-2952 Alpha Opening Information Agent Davis centered SCP-2952 at the closest SCP-2952-1 to the head, and was directed to depart at the next SCP-2952-1 instances, where a transport team was waiting for her. All material inside SCP-2952 was written in Welsh, and SCP-2952-2 instances also spoke only Welsh. Agent Elizabeth Davis was selected for the mission in part due to her fluency in Welsh. Log begins at 1028. Begin log. Agent Davis touches SCP-2952 and immediately begins decreasing in size. What on earth? Okay. Shrinkage seems proportional? Well, let's hope it's proportional, for my sake. Agent Davis chuckles. None of the typical detrimental side effects you see with other SCPs that cause shrinkage. And? Noting that end height appears to be 3.2 centimeters tall. Control, can you still hear me? We can hear you perfectly, Agent. All right then. Tech isn't affected by the shift, either. Good to know. Door should open at 1035, yes? That's correct. Agent Davis waits, during which time six instances of SCP-2952-2 join her. A male instance of SCP-2952-2 approaches her, referred to as Instance 2-A in the log for brevity. You are clear to engage in conversation if needed, Agent Davis. Agent Davis does not respond verbally, but discreetly makes a thumbs-up gesture in view of the body camera. Hope this thing isn't late again. I tried to make it to the glade in time for midnight at the solstice, missed it by six minutes. All the ingredients for a harvest's bane incantation, gone to seed. Do you know why it's been late? Some kind of internal blockage. Poor things got kidney stones, I hear. Subsequent scans revealed the presence of two moderately sized kidney stones near the New Delhi SCP-2952-1 instance. The Foundation is currently halting service at that stop for a week to allow for surgery and recovery. The openings along SCP-2952 side appear at 1041, and nine instances of SCP-2952-2 exit. 
Agent Davis enters SCP-2952, whereby all communication with Mission Control cuts off. The interior of SCP-2952 looks similar to a subway car. The wall, ceiling and floor appear to be constructed of birch bark wrapped around thin twigs. The walls are lined with seats, which are cushioned with a variety of flower petals. Many of the seats are in disrepair. There are 42 instances of SCP-2952-2 aboard the car, filling around two-thirds of the available seats. Agent Davis takes a seat across from instance 2-A. The doors close and the car begins to move. A slightly distorted voice begins to speak, with no discernible source. Now departing from three Portlands. There is no instance of SCP-2952-1 located in three Portlands, but the stop where Agent Davis boarded is only five kilometers away from an entrance to three Portlands. Next stop, West Coast Rainforest. Agent Davis observes her surroundings. Posted on the upper walls are advertisements for an organic oak moss tincture, a religious organization practicing a variant of paganism, a horror movie featuring SCP-2323 entitled Strike of the Shrike and the premiere of a new children's cartoon featuring SCP-2952 called The Global Adventures of the Great Grady. Also visible are various forms of graffiti, including multiple messages such as Brownie Souk, Go Back to Your Glens, and an image resembling SCP-2547. An instance of SCP-2952-2 further down the car begins playing Lady Greensleeves on a flute loudly and off-key. Shut the hell up, will you? A baby begins crying. Another instance of SCP-2952-2 throws a thorn at the flutist, who promptly ceases playing. After some time, an elderly female instance of SCP-2952-2, designated instance 2-B, approaches Agent Davis while holding a scroll. 2-B. Excuse me dear, would you mind signing this petition? It's attempting to revoke the new law saying that mice are no longer allowed on board. So unfair. Just a signature, dear, that's all I need, not even a true name. Er, uh, apologies, miss, but I'm not a citizen. 2B, I see. Very well. Would you mind if I sit? Not at all. Instance 2-B takes the seat next to Agent Davis and begins knitting using two thorns as needles. At the far end of the car. A male instance of SCP-2952-2 takes out a package wrapped in leaves and unwraps it, revealing a mushroom of unknown species. The instance begins loudly consuming the mushroom. Based on the facial expressions of other passengers, the mushroom is quite pungent in odor. Instance 2-B leans over to Agent Davis. 2-B, now if they were going to ban something truly unpleasant. Agent Davis laughs. Now approaching West Coast Rainforest. Agent Davis stands. When the car stops, she exits along with instances 2-A, 2-B, and 12 others. Agent Davis approaches SCP-2952 and pats its side. Good boy. Agent Davis is returned to normal size. Communication resumes. She crouches over the departing crowd, spots instance 2-B, and waves farewell before departing for the transport vehicle. End log. Thank you for tuning in, we hope that you enjoyed this broadcast. If you did please subscribe, like and share it around. If you have any particular case files you'd like us to cover in future broadcasts leave a comment below and we'll get around to it shortly. Tune in again tomorrow for more revelations.